Hi, my name is Eve Kalinic. I'm a nutritional therapist and author. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to Gizzy Erskine about her personal gut health journey. Gizzy, I'm a really big believer that tasty, delicious food and gut nourishing food are not mutually exclusive, and I'd mm -hmm. love to get your thoughts on that. But let's kick off with telling us a little bit more about your personal gut health journey. Was there a pivotal moment for you? Oh God, yeah, really intense pivotal moment. Um, I guess it started when I was about 25. Um, so, oh God, that's over 15 years ago now. Um, I had been going through, I was at catering school and um, had been living in quite an intense situation where I'd been at school working uh, sort of from your classic nine to five at catering school, going, finishing there, going straight into kitchens um, and then having to go to work on a weekend and earn some money but then still do nights in the kitchens mm -hmm. and um, and fit in coursework somewhere. And I was absolutely exhausted. And I mean, to the point where I got um, what I can only describe as chronic fatigue. I was um, constantly getting ill and uh, didn't know really about the sort of extremity of taking lots of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But my uh, because I ended up in hospital a couple of times with really extreme like I had a really bad um, kidney problem which meant that I was bleeding uh, weeing blood like really this is probably a bit grim actually but um, thick thick blood and so the doc the hospital would put me on antibiotics so my doctor didn't necessarily know and there was a lot, a lot of cross-pollination going on there so I probably had five batches of antibiotics in about two months mm -hmm. and uh, to the point where I was actually crippled in over in pain with my stomach um, and couldn't ingest anything like anything I ate sent me into like a frenzy like, of absolute agony you know I was doubled over in pain um, but I was also this chronic fatigue was getting worse and worse and worse and nobody could quite put their finger on what it was um, suddenly revelation going to I was actually sort of my mum was like right we're gonna send you to the family doctor and uh, he clocked it immediately and was like look you've definitely you've been taking too many antibiotics over tact your gut flora we need to really look at how you fix that which was brilliant because I don't think mm, many doctors no. particularly 15 years ago had that sort of vision um so I um started reading up about a candida diet he explained it was candida um started reading up about the candida diet and uh took the plunge and went three months into eating not very much, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, doing the best that I could with the foods that I believed I was allowed to eat. Yeah. You know, I tried, I tried to do it the sort of lighter way to begin with, which meant that I was sticking to sort of high protein um, and I still was drink, eating certain fruits um, mm. and having dairy at that stage. But if I'm completely honest, it completely cleared up when I gave up everything that had any kind of sugar in it, if I'm totally honest. So by the time I, I sort of really hit the ground running with it, I think I did about sort of six weeks of uh, simply protein and mm. vegetables, which by sort of pure circumstance made me lose a ton of weight. <laughs> but um, but, hard but by accident, age, yeah. oh, it was awful. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not a, you know, I was a pretty skinny girl as it was, you mm. know, in those days, and mm. I definitely didn't need to lose weight. It was. Mm. It was a, just going through an excruciating time. Yeah. Um, you know, trying lots of different herbs. Uh, I was the, taking a lot of oregano, probiotics, obviously. All of the sort of things and doing everything I could to try and get rid of it. And it really took a lot of time to, to recalibrate. Wow, that's, I mean, that's an incredible journey, isn't it? Mm. So through all of that experience, how, what's your kind of understanding now about gut health and the importance of gut health and all of the microbes that live in our gut? Yeah. Well, there's, there's a few different things. I think, you know, I've changed, it's became, it became a huge interest, I mm. think, from then on. Um, we've got a mutual friend, Rose Ferguson, don't mm. we? So Rose and I have a business together, which is called Filth Foods. It's a um, plant-based burger yeah. company, which is based around gut health and uh, high nutrition. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, we sort of fell completely in love when she 
we'd been out at a party one day, or a festival in fact, and was like, come on, we're gonna, because I was having all these contrary discussions about gut health, and she was like, come on, let's go to the Maya clinic, and we did, yeah. and um, had a lot of still contrary discussions about it, because we sit, I'm always gonna be the argumentative one, I think, mm -hmm. but she, and we both, but what we both- Challenging. Challenging. Yes. But, we, but we like to both put ourselves in the position mm -hmm. of, you know, learning from putting ourselves through it, so, um, but learned so much while, while I was there. As soon as I started eating uh, and, and in a sort of more considered way to, for my gut, uh, clearing out the sort of um, the, the space, the sugars and all the bad back yeasts and bacteria in order to relay down the prebiotics and, and then probiotics, it kind of, you suddenly get this real brain clarity that suddenly makes it all worth it. Suddenly you can think clearly and you're able to do things and you've got energy again. And I guess the importance of it all um, made me sleep better. All of these things and all the things which I guess had been making me ill in the first place. So you can't really not go and experience that and not take it on on a massive way. Yeah. Um, it's all, it's gonna affect you in a big way. Then I guess we've sort of made it, I've made it my, a big, guess a bit of a mission. I wrote a book called Healthy uh, Appetite, which was to be particularly contrary to a lot of the health food mm -hmm. blogging that was coming out uh, five, six years yeah, ago. Yeah, there was a whole movement around yeah. that time, wasn't there? Yeah. And, uh, but, but what I really wanted to do was pose a lot of these questions and eat, eat a lot of the sort of good foods. And But well, the one thing which we kept coming back to was anything that you eat that's going to support your gut mm -hmm. health is really important. So we were yeah. We were really pushing a lot of, we, I was pushing a lot of um, sort of gut healthy foods and uh, really, I think now I just, you know, I guess I, I think I feel quite responsible for bringing kimchi to, to the world. Well, that <laughs> definitely is a positive thing. So I guess it has changed then your relationship with food yeah. in a way, your, oh, your experience and, and understanding and yeah. you're obviously very positive about that. So how's that kind of changed, would you say, your relationship with food? Well, listen, I'm not perfect. I am, I'm without doubt and I think I'm kind of notorious for being the person who will put their hands up and say that they do eat junk food every so often. Mm. And, you know, I've been here today and I've already, you've, you've very kindly told me the sugar in my coffee <laughs> isn't remotely as bad as I think it is. And I, I've had a pastry, you know, I will eat pretty much what I want, but I, I make it a sort of mission to start my day with uh, Simprove. And I do and have done that for years. I think I first came across Simprove I'm going to say about, it was probably during the time that I wrote the book, mm -hmm. uh, that, that particular book, Healthy Appetite, um, and through a friend of mine, and it just really, I did the first course and it was, it changed everything. And then I still, I'm trying to think what I still do. If I'm being particularly good, I'll, I'll have a glass of, um, a massive pint of water with lemon juice, a bit of cider vinegar, and a tiny bit of, um, cayenne pepper as soon as I'm allowed to after that's sort of digested oh, and nice. uh, and then I sort of get on with my day and I can't I guess I eat more vegetables now than I ever mm -hmm. uh, than I ever did I try to only eat um, animal proteins sort of two or three times a week um, that uh, well I'll buy a big piece of meat and then I'll sort of allow it to turn into lots of dishes yeah. which is kind of how I love to cook if I'm going out I'll eat meat Mm -hmm. um, but at home I tend to try and cook, stick to fish and uh, veg and lots of pulses and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I love making, I mean, in fact, last night I made a new batch of kraut and I'm doing like a beautiful Lovely. rainbow kraut at the moment. Um, and, you know, love eating kimchi, love experimenting with all the different, like, with ferments. Yeah. Um, I've got a new chapter in my next book, which is called Restore, which is about um, restorative agriculture and restorative foods. And the first chapter is about, it sort of bamboozles you with how to make your own sort of misos and gochujangs. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people want to understand a bit more about how to make fermented foods. And actually, mm. I guess that segues nicely into what I was going to ask you was, what's your kind of favourite gut nourishing meal, which you said, would that feature in the kimchi and the krauts and, yeah. and whatnot? Definitely. I mean, I, I sort of have... I grew up in Asia and I know, I mean, I grew up in Bangkok, which is a different type of fermentation. But in, in the book, we talk about everything from sort of doing your, your classic pickles to waste foods, you know, and t turning uh, 
waste foods like the water, watermelon rind, which mm -hmm. is actually part of the cucumber family and make it into dill pickles, which is wow. absolutely delicious. If you've not tried that before, it's, no, I definitely it, it's try really that, yeah. fun. Um, so, and then also down to doing a really long, slow ferment. So making misos, but miso is not just from um, soy beans, because we know that there's a lot of sketchy soy out there. Well, there's still a lot of great organic soy. Most of the soy that in the world is not so great. Um, but to make it out of barley and things like that, heritage mm. British grains, um, for beans, oh, things like that. Yeah, that sounds great. So it's really, it's really fun on that crust tea. I don't know, my yeah. favourite gut healthy food, I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm always, I was always a bit disappointed when I heard about cooking out the miso. Suddenly kills all the, back, the good... Uh, the good stuff from it, but it still leaves the delicious flavour. I mean, the thing I yeah. love about uh, about fermented foods is the tang and the umami that yeah. they get. So um, even even in you know, if I was to make a shu miso, which is have you been to Nobu? Yes, once or twice. Do you know the the black cod and miso? Oh yes, yeah. I mean, that's a really famous classic. dish. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, a thing called shu miso, which is like a it's mixed with um, sake and mm -hmm. miso that's mixed with sake and a little bit of sugar and some mirin mm. and it's sort of all boiled down and Delicious. then you then you glaze your fish with it, marinate it and then grill it over hot coals and that is probably my favourite thing to do with miso but then serve it with like a delicious kimchi rainbow slaw mm. would be so you'd have Super. your ferments on the side anyway, yeah. there. In the restaurant I have the pizzeria, yeah. so I've managed to like bring miso into like conventional American <gasps> food. Oh, on a pizza. So, no, not on a pizza, but we, oh, we okay. do a banana split with me sweet miso ice oh, cream. Uh, with a miso caramel. Yeah. And uh, and then like chocolate sauce and loads of it's so good. peanut it's brittle. So it's, yeah. it's just delicious. I mean, I love it. Like I said, the umami tang that you can get from it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, gochujang I use, I mean, we were also in the restaurant, I've managed to bring in um, Korean chicken wings, which are, uh, the base of that is, is gochujang. So, mm. you yeah. it's lo I love, I love get popping it in anywhere, anywhere you can, but... Um, so in the new book, would there be recipes incorporate, I'm, I'm assuming there would be yeah. then? There's so, loads, loads of ferment recipes. Brilliant. I mean, I'm going to say the first chapter bangs about 20 out of you. Okay. One of my favourite ones is actually a drink um, called um, Tapche. Mm -hmm. Have you had it before? No. What's oh, it's that? fantastic. It's delicious. It's Again, it's a waste uh, product yeah. drink that you take off the pineapple skins that you normally throw out and the core and then you let them cover it in a bit of sugar and then you let them ferment in water and mm -hmm. they turn into this delicious pineapple beer. But it's just really oh, a very wow. light kombucha. Okay. And, uh, no, I've never heard of that. I think people find their ferment and then they kind of stick to that. I think yeah. I grew up in a Polish household, so <laughs> sauerkraut. Oh, OK. <laughs> so sauerkraut was the, the kind of thing. But then mm. I guess it's then foraying into yeah. different ferments. And so it's nice to have that guide, I guess, for people to kind of just go, well, I've tried this one, I'll try it. Yeah, yeah so that, sound, that chapter sounds amazing. I, I, if you're, do you, have you ever had Klodnik? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. So that's my way of getting pickles. Pickle soup is just like, so you get your beetroot pickles and your um, cucumber pickles and yeah. blending those into a cold soup with buttermilk, yeah, also yeah. fermented and sour cream. So it's just, that's that's pure gut health, that soup. Oh, it is. And so, and frugality, I guess, in yeah. the strictest sense, really, in terms uh, of Polish cuisine. A lot of it is dumplings and reusing things, and yeah, definitely. Yeah. I saw on your Instagram page that you're a self-proclaimed soil geek and you talk a lot about biodiversity. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about, about that. Well, um, so sort of what the way I sort of perceive it is uh, I'm restorative agriculture is the most critical thing that we can do towards saving the planet, but also to restore our bodies. So uh, I remember just hearing this one simple fact that in one tiny grain of soil that there's more biodiversity than in the whole of our body. And I, it completely blew my mind. Mm. And it just made me realise how critical it is that the foods that we eat contain the right kind of biodiversity in order to help feed our guts. Um, it's, it's so important now because we, we're really aware of how the environment is on its severe demise, and I think now more than ever. Um, so I guess it's it's kind of understanding that what it takes to re rebuild and reclaim our soils, you know, some of these, mm. I think there's a bit of a misconception that um, vegetables are 
the way forward and eating a vegan diet is the way forward. And while I'm really a big believer that we need to be cutting back on meat, I also really believe that uh, the manure that you get from migrating uh, animals is what's going to restore our soils. So, um, and you know, now more than ever, there's science proving this. Mm. So it's just very interesting looking, I've become like an absolute agriculture nerd. Um, and- uh, It's fascinating, yeah. It, it's fascinating. And it's fascinating that the thing that we've now believed for the last, I guess, five years is the thing that's really critically going to uh, affect climate change is the thing that's actually gonna bring it back done in the right way. What do you think small changes people can can do to help I guess move towards that even on a very minor level I think would be great to get your thoughts on that I mean my one tip and it's it's going to be a little bit of a controversial one is to stop buying meat from supermarkets um I think you know it's it's tricky I I am really politically and socially active and I really believe that we need to find a, a social solution towards all of this I hate that coming out with these middle class ideologies but um, I do also believe that, they, that the sort of trends have to start somewhere and ultimately at the moment we really need to be pushing towards um, getting away from mass production of meat mm. because it's just, you know, if we take away the welfare element, mm. it's just not containing the nutrition that we require. It's not, um, it's not feeding people in the right way. It's creating um, mass products of things that are like freezer foods and, 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 and not maybe giving people the option. I mean, we had a chat about this off, mm. off air and I, and I really, it's, it's so complex because mm. again, you know, it's, it's... Well, food is a complicated topic yeah. in itself, but then you take this part of it, yeah, yeah. for sure. If we had more space for um, better quality plant-based foods um, that were grown within this, within this ideology, of, of uh, migration farming, mm. we would just definitely have a lot longer to go. Don't assume that your plant-based food is, is helping the environment. More often than not, it will be grown on a single crop rotation, which is actually decimating mm. it. Try and find a proper old school greengrocer. You know, if you're in the countryside, buy from a local farm and know where you're buying from. Mm -hmm. It is so complex. It's almost like an impossible. Once you start mm. unwinding it, it unravels and it's like, ah. But it, it is, you it's know, the small changes, which ironically mm. is one of the main messages behind Simproof, but small, I think, is for people to just start somewhere, yeah. right? So, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, I guess the last question would be, what are your, if you've got any, daily rituals that you do that help to support your gut mm. health? Well, like I said, first things first, I, I wake up and I have my Simproof. Um, <clears throat> then I go and get ready, and then I come back down, I have a big pint of water, like I said, um with a, the juice of a whole lemon, uh, about two tablespoons of cider vinegar with a mother, pinch of, um, what's it called, cayenne Kine. pepper, and then fill that up as a pint and then neck that. And I love it now. It's like lemonade to me. Even mm. the acidic like afterburn, I absolutely love. <laughs> um, then I take, God, I take quite a lot of vitamins. I have uh, my breakfast, and then that's kind of it really. Before bed I have uh, quite a lot of magnesium. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I just tend to... It's tricky with me because sometimes, some days I'm working in a pizzeria, some days I'm working in a French restaurant, some days I'm working at mm. home developing recipes. Um, there is no uniform to my yeah. day, and I've just got to try my best to eat around that. Yeah. And the truth is, you know, my weight goes up and down, and my health also follows because mm. it's my job. Mm -hmm. But I do, I do believe that if I start the day the way that I do, yeah. that it's definitely put me on a much better track. Yeah, you've got a nice morning ritual. Yeah. Well, it's been amazing. I could chat to you all day, actually. Yeah, so there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed that and took some lots of tips and things like that away from it. And I look forward to seeing you soon.